One of the big benefits of using web components is the ability to use our components in many different web environments. Most modern JavaScript frameworks are compatible with custom elements. Unfortunately, due to some API compatibility issues, React needs some additional help to be able to work with web components. In this example, we'll show how to integrate our dropdown web component into a React application. For our example, we use create React app to bootstrap a React project for us. We've gone ahead and followed the installation steps to create our application. Once created, we run npm run start to be able to start up our application. Once started, we can see our running React application. Inside of our application, we have our dropdown web component. To get our dropdown web component working in React, we had to do some additional steps to get React to be compatible with our web component. First, we'll start with our app.js. In our app.js, we have a few different properties in our state. We have our show property that gets toggled whenever we open and close our dropdown. And then we also have our title property, project react, which will set our property in our dropdown. In our template of our app component, we have our paragraph. And based on the state for show, we'll show either the message open or closed. For our dropdown, we cannot use the web component directly due to React's incompatibility with a few different custom element APIs. To be able to get our dropdown to work with React, we have to create a wrapper React component to interop our React component with our web component. So here we've created a dropdown React component that passes in the properties and the events down into a compatibility layer that we'll see in a moment. In our dropdown React component, we pass in the title property from our title state, and then we pass in a show handler into our own show prop. This will get called whenever our show event from our web component, and we'll call handle show on our app component method. Whenever this is shown, we'll set the state of the show property, which will reflect in our template. Next, we have our dropdown React component, which wraps our web component so our React application can understand how to work with our web component. In our wrapper component, we've imported our package, which contains our dropdown component. And to be able to work with our web component, we need to create a reference to our custom element. So using the React Create Ref API, we'll create a reference that we'll use in the template of our dropdown. In the render method of our dropdown component, we have our direct usage of our X dropdown web component. To pass down the dynamic content into our shadow DOM and our default slot of our web component, we'll pass in the children props. To be able to set the properties and listen to the events on our X dropdown, we'll set the ref of our dropdown ref. This will allow us to be able to set properties within our React component. So when our component's created, we can set the title using the dropdown ref and set the title property of the X dropdown. If there's an on show prop, then we create a show event listener. So here we're creating add event listener show, which will then call our on show prop. If any of the props change of our wrapper container, then we update the inner properties and events of our dropdown reference. React unfortunately has some incompatibilities with binding to properties directly as well as listening to custom events on custom elements. Because of this, we have to wrap our web components inside of a React app so we can reference our web component in other places of our application. To learn more about web components and custom elements compatibility with JavaScript frameworks, check out the website Custom Elements Everywhere. This website is a great reference to see what frameworks work with web components. This website also runs a series of unit tests and end-to-end -end tests to make sure that frameworks are fully compatible with the web component specs. You can see several different frameworks and libraries and how they are compatible with web components and any potential issues that they may have. If we scroll down, we can see React.js and we can also track the open issues against React to become compatible with custom elements and the web component APIs.